tired? Not really, except for washing. But I wanted to talk to my friends when you came, for I had a chance to make them listen. Oh, I'm sorry. Next time I'll come up the stairs very slowly so that I don't catch you out. Oh, I'd rather you weren't too slow. I like your coming here. Good. Well then, let's get started straight away. Right? Yeah. Now, where's your map of Africa? Oh, oh Marianne, now you can do better than that. I know you can. Now, that's much better. Why can't you draw Africa as well as this house? Because it isn't as interesting. Of course it is. It's much more interesting. And I thought that you'd want to draw Africa, especially as your father's there. Who's the boy at the window? Oh, I don't know, really. Anyone. Oh, well. Let's have a look at the atlas and see if we can improve on this somewhat miserable effort of yours. Looks more like a pumpkin than a continent. Actually, his name is Mark. Whose name? The boy in my window. Oh, that's the name of the boy I teach. The one that won't walk. I know. Do you? It seems to me I tell you far too much about my pupils, not nearly enough about your work. How is he? Much more industrious than you are. He wouldn't draw like that. He worked hard because he wants to please me. Then why won't he try to walk? Well, I'm sure that pleases you much more than drawing maps. It's funny. We're just the opposite, him and me, aren't we? He's supposed to take exercise and he won't, and I'm not supposed to, and I do. It's a pity you can't mix us up a bit, Miss Chesterfield. Then he would walk and I would work. You are going to work hard without me mixing you up with Mark. Now, come on. Africa. Africa has two deserts. Do you know what they are? One's the Sahara. Good girl. That's the biggest desert in the world. And what's the other one? The Kalahari. It's very big, thousands of square miles. It's rocky, it hasn't much vegetation. There are antelopes and ostriches. What's weather like there? Well, depends where you are. It's hot because it's tropical. But there's a lot of wind in some of the areas. And although it's a desert, it isn't a proper one like the Sahara. A lot of it's covered in grass and scrub, which is why animals can survive. There's a slight rainfall. <laughs> glad to see me. Well, I'm not. Well, but why have you come? I didn't want to. Well, go away then. You don't have to be rude. It's rude telling people to go away. Well, you just said you wanted to go. Well, I don't anymore. Well, what do you want then? Well, how can I tell what I want when I'm here and I don't want to be? I want to walk, but I can't. No, you don't. You want to be good at reading and lessons and drawing maps. How do you know what you want to be good at? You don't even know me except when I'm here. This isn't ordinary life. I mean, we're not always in this house, are we? I don't know. Perhaps I've always been here and just imagined the rest. Well, I think you're a dream. My dream. And I thought that if I didn't dream about you, you wouldn't be here. But this isn't a dream. This is real. Yes, it is, isn't it? Just as real as Miss Chesterfield telling me that you like reading. Doesn't make any difference whether I do or I don't, does it? It's nothing to read. But you do, don't you? Do what? Like reading. You're lazy. You won't do your exercises because they hurt. I wish you'd leave me alone. I wish I could. I wish I didn't have to be here. And you're a coward. And you're a horrible little girl saying things about me you don't even know who I am. That's why you can't walk. You won't do your exercises. Yes, I do. I do them all the time. Then you're not Miss Chesterfield's mark. I'm not anybody's mark. I'm me. And anyway, what do you know about Miss Chesterfield? She's my teacher. No, she's not. She's mine. 
And if you think she's yours, tell me what she's like. Why should I? You never believe anything I say. Well, I believe you if you tell me what she's like. She's young, and she's pretty, and she goes around teaching children of her own. But when she gets married... She's married. She... She's going to marry a man called Peter. Who's Peter? He's a teacher. He lives in London. She's going to live there too. How do you know? Because she told me. That just shows you don't know her. My Miss Chesterfield's old and strict, and nobody could possibly want to marry her. That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. I knew it. You're not Miss Chesterfield, Mark. You're not. You're not. The, the most, most interesting story about Africa, Africa is the discovery of the source of the Nile. Perhaps you saw the television program on it. Marianne, are you listening? Yes, of course I am. What was I talking about? You were talking about the wind on the Kalahari. No, that was ages ago. What was I talking about now? Is it true you're engaged? Marianne, please attend. I was telling you about the source of the Nile. But are you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. How did you know? Oh, I just did. And your fiancé is called Peter, and he teaches in London, and you're going to live there. Is that right? How on earth did you find all that out? You won't go away before I'm better, will you? No. We're not getting married for about a year, so you're quite safe. Oh, I'm glad about that. And I'm glad you're going to marry someone nice. Is he nice? <laughs> of course he's nice. I wouldn't be marrying him if he wasn't. You are a funny girl. Will you go on teaching Mark until you get married? Well, I hope he'll be up by then, but sometimes I wonder. Anyway, that's enough for today. Oh, won't you stay a bit longer? No, I can't today. I've got another engagement. But I'll tell you a secret. What? Tomorrow's my birthday. Is it? So we'll have a nice, easy lesson. And as you seem to know so much about me already, I'll tell you a little bit more. I'll tell you why I teach children who stay away from school. And I might even tell you a little bit about Peter. All right? Oh, yes, Miss Chesterfield. I love that. Have you got them? Will you get back into bed immediately? Yes, I have. I'll bring them out to you in a moment. Go on. I had trouble finding ones that were nice enough at a difficult time of year for roses. But these are lovely, aren't they? Oh, Mum. Thank you. Do you think Miss Chesterfield will like them? Rather. Where can I hide them? She'll be here soon. Shall I tell her I brought them my own money? <laughs> I'll put them under my bed. Brush your hair and make yourself look really nice. Oh, yeah. You look smashing. <laughs> what shall I do until she comes? Read a book, darling. There's some music to keep you going. I hope Miss Chesterfield won't be long. I don't get to the dentist on time. He won't see me. Marianne, I think I'd better go. You'll be all right by yourself for just a few minutes, won't you? All right, Mum. Of course. I'll leave the door on the latch. Right? Oh, I do wish she'd hurry. So do I. I can't see what's keeping her so late today. Maybe the other's ten. 
I think I'd better ring the dentist. Look, Mum, you go. I'll be all right, honestly. Oh, thank goodness, there she is. <laughs> God bless, darling. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Hello, come in. Look what I've been given. Aren't they beautiful? Yes, aren't they? I must show them to Marianne. Um, why don't I put them in water for you? You go on up. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. And then I must dash to the dentist. You don't mind, do you? No, no, I'll look after Marianne. Sorry I'm late, Marianne. I know how annoying it is to be kept waiting. But Mark's mother rang and asked me to call in on my way here. And then it took longer than I expected. It's not your day for Mark? No. But as it's my birthday, Mark wanted me to call. I only intended to stay a short time, but he had such a lovely present for me, I couldn't hurry away. Wait a minute, I'll show it to you. Aren't they beautiful? And Mark saved up his pocket money just for me. I'd like you to have some, Marianne. They'll look lovely in here. No, thank you. Mark wouldn't mind a bit. I can easily spare some from such a big bunch. I don't want them. Why ever not? Because I hate roses. And I hate... Oh! Whatever is the matter, Marianne? Nothing. Well, there must be something the matter, or you wouldn't be crying. I want Mum. I'm afraid she's gone out. Can I help? No. Well, aren't you feeling well? No. Well, you were feeling all right when I came in. Has your leg started to hurt you? I don't know. Everything hurts. I just want to be left alone. I think I'd better call the doctor. I don't need a doctor. Oh, maybe not, but I, whilst I'm responsible for you, I'm not prepared to take the risk. I'll go and phone him. You must be feeling ill. My poor roses and Mark and his mother went to so much trouble to get them. I can't understand what made you do it, Marianne. You're not generally spiteful. Tell me what's wrong. Well, I wish I was dead. That's silly. You don't wish anything of the kind. You're just being childish. I am a child. And I feel awful. For awful reasons. Come on. Lie back quietly. We'll do some reading. Chesterfield, I thought you'd gone. No, I was waiting for you to come back, actually. I'm afraid Marianne's not feeling very well. I've called Dr. Burton's surgery. He said he'll come round this evening. Did anything happen to upset her? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. She suddenly got very temperamental, but there was nothing to account for it, not really. I hate Mark. I hate him. He's a beast and you sport my present. I hate him more than anyone else in the world. There. If he tries to get out of the house now, they'll see him. They'll watch him all the time. They'll never let him out. <laughs> Chief. 
she has a slight temperature. You mustn't let things get you down, Marianne. Well, I do try, Dr. Burton. I really do. Well, no one can help getting upset occasionally, but for goodness sake, don't get yourself into such a state. Remember that every time your temperature goes up, it means an extra day in bed. Now, that ought to keep you cool. Well, it might when I'm all right, but it doesn't help when I feel like this. <laughs> no, perhaps not. Look, Mrs. Austin, I'm going to give you some medicine for her. There. That ought to help. Thank you. Goodbye, Marianne. Try to keep calm. We're all here to help, you know. I'll just go and see Dr. Burton now. to be an unusually volatile child. She's always been so normal, Doctor, until this happened. Mm. Well, she gets on well at school and everything. Does she find difficulty in making friends with other children? I must say she's never given me that impression. But then you can never tell with only children. They do tend to keep themselves to themselves. Oh, she's just the opposite. She's always out with her friends, riding or swimming or somewhere. Goodness knows what they get up to <laughs> half the time. Oh, you wouldn't know this house normally, Doctor. Mm. Kids running in and out all the time. I've never known her like this. Well, I'm quite sure there's nothing wrong with her, apart from her leg, of course. There are no signs of an infection. No, actually, what I was wondering was um, whether you'd had some kind of row with her. I mean, something that would explain the state she's in. Oh, no. We get on very well. Of course, I do get a bit impatient with her sometimes, you know, but nothing real. Does she miss her father a lot? Well, not really. We're used to him being away some of the time. She's a very cheerful child, Doctor, usually. Mm. Oh, good evening, Mr. Preston. I hope you don't mind me calling. No, not at all. Come in. Thank you. Uh, Miss Chesterfield, just the person I want to see. We were discussing Marianne. Well, that's why I came. How is she? Oh, she'll be fine. I'm quite certain that her temperature is due to an emotional upset. Um, what is your impression of Marianne? Oh, I find her a lively, intelligent girl. She doesn't always want to work, but it's not too difficult to get her interested. I think she'll do very well when she gets back to school. Has anything happened lately that would explain this upset? Uh, Mrs. Austin doesn't know of anything. I thought uh, you might be able to help. Well, she was a bit temperamental this morning. Not her normal self. I would have thought that the raised temperature would have explained that. Well, that's a question of cause and effect, isn't it? I mean, which came first, the upset or the temperature? Yes, well, I must be going. It's nothing serious, anyway. I just um, would have liked an explanation, that's all. I'm not going to dream about the house. I'm not going to. I'll stay awake, and then I won't have to see that Mark again. He can stay alone. I'm not going in. I'm not going to. Ah! Who's that? Who's that? not stupid, but I know you're the only person that comes here. It wasn't so dark last time. The bars weren't here last time. Bars? The bars over the windows. They weren't here when I came. And then I must have fallen asleep or something. Because when I woke up, I could hardly see at all. But I knew it was the same room. Couldn't we turn a light on in here? There must be some electricity or something. If there is, I haven't seen it. There's no electric fittings. Anyway, I can't get about much, remember? Yes. Just wish I could understand who put the bars over the windows. Somebody must have done it from the outside. They're all uneven, too, like right mad scribbles. What's the matter now? Oh, nothing. I just thought I heard a noise, like people talking in whispers. Yes, I've heard it, too. It's a bit creepy, isn't it? Mark? 
Yes? I've just thought of something. Well? Oh, your thing's ever so silly. I might. Well, it might have been me. What do you mean it might have been you? It is you, isn't it? No, I don't mean that. I mean... Well, it's difficult to explain. You see, I drew this house in my drawing before I even saw it. Then I dreamed I was outside it, but I couldn't get in because there wasn't anyone inside and there wasn't a knocker or anything. And then I drew you looking out the window and a knocker and next time I came, you were both here. You and a knocker, I mean. Well, what does that prove? You could have dreamed everything first and drawn it afterwards. I can prove it. You said there weren't any stairs the first time, and there weren't. But there were after I drew them. They could have been there before. But you said they weren't. Anyway, now there's the bars. I drew them in my sketchbook. Oh, don't you see? No, I don't. And you're talking nonsense. And what about me, then? Do you mean to tell me I wasn't alive until you drew me? No. I mean, yes. When I drew someone to live in the house, I didn't know it was going to be you. You admit I'm real, then? Oh, yes, I know you're real, because of Miss Chesterfield and the roses. And that's why I drew the bars. You're mad. You think you're so clever. You think you invented me, the house, the bars and everything. You want to boss everything, pretending it's all part of your measly drawing. It is. All right, then prove it. How? Go and draw something useful with your drawings. Draw us some light, draw us outside this house, and draw me walking, then I'll believe you. I can't. But that's what I said. Only because I'm here and not there. You're showing off again. All right. I'll teach you. First I'll rub you out so I never have to see you again, and then I'll stop dreaming about you so you won't exist. You try. All right. There isn't a house, and no more. And only me, Marianne, at home in bed. There. Now he's gone for good. I'm not going to dream about him ever again. <laughs> 